Good morning, it's Reverend Mike Capron. Uh, today we're gonna consider a mysterious figure from the Bible. His name is Balaam. He was a true prophet. The Lord actually spoke to him, but interestingly, he was not an Israelite, not a Hebrew, not one of the people God made a covenant with at Mount Sinai. Four whole chapters in the book of Numbers are devoted to him. And some archaeological finds indicate that other Middle Eastern cultures had stories about Balaam, too. Uh, perhaps he was a figure of legend with historical roots, like Robin Hood or King Arthur. Um, but we, of course, will only deal with the biblical text. Let me give you the situation. Moses had led God's people out of slavery in Egypt, then over to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments and the law. Um, then there's this incident where the people are too frightened to enter the promised land. So they're still in the wilderness, skirting the edge of that land. They're east of the Jordan River Valley, probably in modern day Jordan. Um, they have already encountered one ethnic group, the Amorites. They rolled right over them and took their land. And the next group in line are the Moabites. At the start of our story, Moabite, their king Balak, is pretty panicky. If the Israelites were able to duplicate what they did to the Amorites, he knows his people don't stand a chance. And rumor has it that the Israelite God is very strong, a true rumor. Uh, so Balak figures he needs some supernatural help of his own, and that is why he calls on the legendary Balaam. Um, the story gets a tad confusing at this point. When the delegation from King Balak arrives to offer Balaam a lot of money to curse the Israelites, at first he tells them no, and then with God's blessing, he tells them yes. Uh, but then we get to the famous part of the story, which I'm about to tell you, the story with the donkey. And at that point, God seems to be upset because Balaam said yes. Like I said, confusing, but we're gonna roll into the cool part now. Numbers 22, 21 to 35. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey and went with the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding his donkey and his two servants were there with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field, but Balaam beat it to get it back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the left or to the right. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have you done, excuse me, what have I done to make you beat me three times? Balaam answered the donkey, you have made a fool of me. If I only had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. He said to Balaam, am I not your own donkey, which you've always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with the drawn sword. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, go with the men, but only speak what I tell you. So Balaam went on with King Balak's officials. 
So let's uh, pause here and consider this donkey. This summer, we are talking about the many ways that one can tell a story, narrate a story. So is this a good donkey or a bad donkey? Halfway through the story, it looked like a bad donkey, at least to Balaam and the people around him. But at the end, it comes out smelling like roses. Definitely a good donkey. So when you are deciding on how to relate the events of your life or how to tell a story, here's one question to ask yourself. Is this story over or am I only part way through it? Be a bit careful about reaching conclusions when we're only halfway through a story. Now, when it comes to animals, we don't usually get to interrogate them about what they're doing and why, but Balaam does get to do that. And during the conversation between Balaam and the donkey, it comes out that Balaam's primary issue is that he was embarrassed, that the donkey had made a fool of him. And in front of Balak's emissaries, how human this is. Have you ever stumbled, fallen, or otherwise injured yourself and noticed your first impulse is to look around and see if anyone saw you? It really isn't the most important thing, but so often it is the one that comes to us first. And in his embarrassment, Balaam has been flailing away at the donkey. And so the donkey asks the question, Am I not your donkey, which you've always ridden to this day? And have I been in the habit of doing this to you? Now there is some good advice for us. If someone we know is acting out of character, perhaps there is some reason for it we do not know. When someone is an old friend, of good character, and they seem to be acting strangely, that would be a good time to be curious, to wonder what is going on. It may save us from a mistake. It may save the relationship, it may allow us to help our friend or family member. Perhaps they have, like the donkey, have good reasons that we don't know about, or some trial or difficulty we don't know about. Now on to the next point. Balaam's discernment of God's will. Uh, when we human beings are trying to figure out what God wants us to do, that is called discernment. And most of us have to do our discernment through careful prayer. And often we don't know for certain when God does or does not want us to do something. Balaam is granted the sight to see a literal angel barring his path, and he gets to talk to him. It explains how the donkey has saved his life, and it gives him instructions for what to do next. Go with Balak's men, but only say what the Lord prompts you to say. <laughs> ah, Lord, if only your instructions to us were always so very clear. Uh, even if the part with the angel and the sword uh, that might have killed us is terrifying. On to the rest. For the next three chapters, King Balak prompts Balaam to curse Israel. And the words that come out of Balaam's mouth are not curses. Here's the exchange between the two men in Numbers 23, 11 and 12. Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies, but you've done nothing but bless them. <laughs> and Balaam answered, must I not speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? Seven times Balaam blesses Israel and Balak just despairs more and more each time. I'm going to read you Balaam's second oracle, uh, just so you get a taste of what this is like. Numbers 23, 18 to 24, and Balaam spoke his message. Arise, Balak, and listen, hear me, son of Zippor. He's speaking for God now. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Question mark. Implied answer, no. Does he promise and not fulfill? No. I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. No misfortune is seen in Jacob. Jacob's descendants. No misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. There is no divination or magic against Jacob, no evil omens against Israel. 
It will now be said of Jacob and of Israel, see what God has done. The people rise like a lioness. They rouse themselves like a lion. It does not rest until it devours its prey and drinks the blood of its victims. End of reading. Perhaps this would be a good moment to say something about God. That is my primary job, after all. God is faithful. God does not lie. God fulfills God's promises. It is in God's nature to bless far more than to curse. I'm going to repeat that. It's important. God is faithful. God does not lie. God fulfills God's promises. It is in God's nature to bless far more than to curse. If you ever feel you are being cursed by God, well, let me just say that is exceedingly unlikely. It is possible you are being prompted to change something in your life, but you are not cursed. As the scriptures say, God's anger is tiny compared to God's love and mercy. And I am grateful for this exotic story of Balaam because it uh, illustrates God's fidelity in such an interesting way. I love the weird stories of the Bible. But narrate your life through trust in God, and you will not be disappointed. Now, that's really the end of my sermon, but I have an epilogue. In Numbers 22 through 24, Balaam comes out looking good. Uh, He does what God tells him to do. He was hired to curse Israel, but he blesses Israel instead. Balaam also gets a positive review in the book of Micah. But if you look at other biblical passages that reference Balaam, he is not well regarded. As early as Numbers 31 in Deuteronomy, he is reviled as an enemy of Israel. In Joshua, Nehemiah, 2 Peter, and Jude, he is likewise vilified. Talk about narrating someone's life in different ways. What is going on here? Well, Different people have different opinions about world events and about history. Also, life is complicated. Not everything you hear is true. Figuring out what you think is true is hard work. The crux of the matter, in this case, has to do with how you interpret Numbers chapter 25, which starts something like this. While Israel was near Moab, where Balak was the king, The men began to engage in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to the sacrifices to their pagan gods, violating the covenant, the Ten Commandments, worshiping, worship no other gods before me. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to the pagan deity Baal of Peor and the Lord's anger burned against them. So according to one narrative, including Numbers 25 itself, this is Israel's sin and Israel's mess that they got into on their own and that the Lord judges them for and punishes them. According to the other narrative, their problems result from a deliberate plan that Balaam gives to Balak to entrap Israel. Now, most people would rather narrate their life in a way that allows them to blame someone else for their problems. And it feels to me like that is what people did with Balaam here. If you ever catch yourself doing that, be really, really careful. As Jesus said, don't don't try to pick sawdust out of somebody else's eye if you have a log in your own. Be humble and manage your own life as best you can. And remember that God's primary purpose is to bless. That's all for today. May God indeed bless you all. And may you be really clear about those blessings and narrate your life that way. Amen.